So this happened today. So I guess I'll talk about this too, since this happened yesterday on my way from work, and this is kind of like a vlog episode. Um, I was at a stoplight in the right lane, and there's a traffic, there's a there's a turn lane, a right turn lane that opens up like right where I was stopped, but there wasn't quite enough room for the truck behind me to fit between me and the curb. But he went for it anyway, and he clipped me, and he took off. And so I followed him into the parking lot, and he parks, and he runs up to the bar, he won't talk to me, and he runs up to the bar where his buddy's at and he just starts drinking and that tells me that he might have already been drinking and he was trying to cover his ass for a DUI but he refused to talk to me I end up having to call the cops cops show up they measure the tread there's a friction mark on his tire the tread pattern matches the pattern on my car um, but since there's no witnesses and no hard proof evidence that the damage is conclusively com like combination damage or whatever they were saying um, they can't conclusively prove that that friction on that that tire happened because of this um, they can only kind of suggest that the same type of tire did the damage to my car um, it's pretty shitty um, but the dude denied 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 and um, He's just generally being a douchebag about it. So I figured I'll talk about it. I'm not gonna give out any of his personal information other than the fact that he's a contractor. He works for himself. He's got lots of um, toys. So I don't think it was a money thing. Um, and I don't want his money really. I just wanted him to be a responsible person and help me take care of it. Um, but his name's Troy. So fuck you, Troy, if you're seeing this. Fuck you, buddy. Shifting gears. All right, working on cleaning up all the grime and nasty stuff off this subframe um, because it is going to be reused on the school car. So we're just going to go ahead and clean it up so that it's not all grimy and nasty to work on. You know, it's just it's really nice when your car is clean and you can touch stuff without gloves and not get just completely black. So even though it is the uh, the school car, we're still going to go ahead and clean it up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this. Uh, this subframe up and it's got lots of nice grime and dirty stuff so this is just hot water with uh, Dawn dish soap and a rag um, it's about as hot as you can stand and then put the Dawn dish soap and the hot water just just rub all this stuff and it'll it'll break it up it'll come off onto the rag and then just keep dunking your rag to kind of clean it off and you'll be surprised at how, uh, how fast it'll actually get some parts clean. You can see how the foam is like all gray now instead of white. That's because it's eating up all that oil and grime and loosening it up.
So a little tip, if you're cleaning like really greasy and grimy parts and it's got all of this gunk on there, you can take a plastic promo card, like a gift card that's expired or no longer good or empty, and you can use that. And the plastic typically won't scratch the paint, but it will scrape off all that gunk. And you can just get all your heavy stuff off and then come back through with a rag or a brush and get all the final details. I'm a big fan of cleaning parts when you have them off because it's a lot easier and enjoyable to work on when it's clean rather than greasy and grimy and you have to get everything dirty. Also, it's a really good way to minimize leaks or at least spot leaks right away because when everything looks oily, it's hard to tell where stuff's coming from. When everything's nice and clean and fresh, you can see where the oil is coming from or fluid and you can typically find it pretty fast. So this is how we're looking right now. All right, so here's how we're looking. Uh, on the bottom. I still got a little bit here to get off. Most of the uh, the big surface that you're going to touch, like mounting it and stuff, is pretty clean now. But I want to get in here where you're going to be doing the bolts for the, the links and all that kind of stuff. So that way you're not getting grease on your hands. All right, so a little bit of time. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. I'm, I'm touching it all over. And look at my hands still clean. So cool all right we're gonna be going ahead and putting the subframe back in but i want to go ahead and clean up i started a little bit on this side i still got some more to do i want to clean up the control arms the links all of the engine bay um, it's gonna get dusty again but i just want to clean it up and get a lot of that off maybe deal with some of this rust when we get a chance it's really just surface stuff so i just gotta take that off and then hit it with some primer and some paint in those areas but besides that just want to get it clean so we can get the subframe in especially down here like on the frame rails so that's what we're gonna work on right, just a little uh quick wipe up all the mounting surfaces for the subframe and everything's clean still got obviously the rust but she cleans up pretty good huh So as you can see, I cleaned it. Um, the transmission tunnel there, down to at least the, uh, the shifter hole. Um, and it's not perfect, and yeah, I used a brush, but as you can see, it's got this undercoating here anyway. It's not paint. Some of it's paint, but mostly I wanna be able to put a transmission in and take it out without dealing with any grease and grime. 
So now that we have the engine bay clean, it's time to look at what we actually need and what we don't need. Okay, we are gonna have to also pull out this shaft and put in the new one from a Mark III Supra um, that's longer because the manual rack is smaller. This has to protrude out further to get to it. So we'll have to do that here shortly. Uh, this booster is more than likely just gonna go just for feel standpoint. And then I don't trust this master. So this, this brake master is gonna go. Uh, the portioning valve is probably fine. We do have a little bit of separation here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, push the firewall back to this, weld that up, paint it, as well as stitch weld down there, paint that, correct the rust here, fill in some of these holes and correct the rust there and fix the firewall as much as possible. Uh, paint will probably be kind of shitty, but as long as it's clean, we're good. And that way, when we put the transmission there, we're not gonna have issues, we're not gonna have greasy hands. I'll just go right in. Fuck you, Troy. You know you hit me. You know damn well you did. Enjoy those fucking beers, dude. Karma's coming for you.